Paper was like gold in medieval times. I want tobacco. Sugar. That everything we thought we knew about the world might turn out to be completely wrong. Off the beaten track in the UK lies another world, often hidden from view. Brimming with secret histories and lively traditions. I'm Christine Blakely and in this series I'll be heading away from the motorways and winding my way down ancient routes. Oh no, 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 you don't need to prove a point. That's it. <laughs> Seeing our nation from its country lanes. Here is one just opening up yet. That is my worst nightmare. I can't even breathe. In off the beaten track, Britain. Today I'm exploring the back roads of Herefordshire in the west of England, largely a working landscape which is heavily farmed, so it's sometimes not that easy to get around. This is a proper country road, isn't it? And I hear the locals quite like it that way. Last year Herefordshire celebrated the M50's 50th anniversary. It was one of the first motorways built in the country. Having said that, Herefordshire haven't built another since, as you can see. It means that the rest of it is just this tangle of A roads and B roads and beautiful little winding country roads like this one. It's created a slower pace of life, a world steeped in tradition. But are the old ways best? I'm here to find out. The first sign that Herefordshire is a county still very much in love with its past is the sight of its black and white villages. Some of these houses here date back to the 16th, 17th century. They're all timber framed and you really get a sense of the history as you're driving through here. There's no mock tutor here, this is the real McCoy. Perhaps one reason there are lots of timber-framed houses in Herefordshire is because, well, there are lots of trees. In fact, the county is recognised as having some of the most important ancient woods in England, with some trees over 600 years old. Nothing but birdsong in these parts. And one man has dedicated his talents to preserving this sound. For the last 10 years, Doug Joyner has been returning this wood to its natural state. G off. G off. Hello, good morning, Doug. How are you? Very well, thank you. Lovely to yeah. see you. What a beautiful place you good. have here. It's good. Oh, it's beautiful. Listening to the birds. That's a real novelty for me. It's gorgeous. And who's this? This is Ella. Oh, Ella. It may be beautiful here, but an evil lurks in these woods that blocks the growth of native plants and which Doug, his trusty steed Ella, and their canine sidekicks are dedicated to fighting. Bracken, a fast-growing fern which outcompetes its rivals. Herefordshire is a very fertile soil, um, but like everywhere, um, bracken is, is, a, is a real problem. Uh -huh. It's starting to take over. It shades everything out. Yeah. If you cut it, it knows it's cut and it coppices, mm -hmm. just like it a hazel tree. It fights back, basically. Yeah, so it's yeah. worse. Uh, whereas what we do is we roll it and crush it. What are we going to do today? I'm going to see Ella in action, am we're, I? We're going to, we're going to work. Um, we're controlling the bracken. Oh, OK, OK. So, after a short period of bonding with the team... You just want a lot of love, don't you? You do, you love it. <laughs> <laughs> we all set to work. Walk on. 
So how often do you do this, Doug, or this route? We do this once, once a year. Once a year, the, right. The bracken work. It's very seasonal. You have to do it when the bracken is at maximum growth. Yeah. Go on. Go on. Oh, yeah. Come on. As you say, you need a horse that's brave enough to kind of... So it's got to trust the venture, you and, yeah. and be brave to go in. Around half of woodlands in England are managed, and Doug believes that old methods are best. Yes. Good girl, Ella. Rolling the bracken using horsepower does very little damage to the soil in wet weather. Now, it's my turn. Well, the important thing is to have a nice, gentle contact with the mouth yeah. and, have, and carry your hands like you're carrying a tray of tea. Uh -huh. I just hope I don't break anything more than the bracken. And you've got to not walk into the bracken basher or in front of it. <laughs> that's that's, useful. A, that's yeah. a good good bit of advice. <laughs> walk on and then a little bit of right. That's, that's lovely. Walk on. Well done, Ella. And then go left now. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here, it's a Northern Irish accent, she doesn't get Come here. Come here. <laughs> Come here, get Ella. Get on. <laughs> there you go. Good girl, Ella. Job done. Well done. That's it. Whoa. Good girl, Ella. Oh, it's fantastic. Every six inches, there'll be a bruise. And every one of those bruises leaks out sap. And the sap then it drains all the food from the root. It can't thrive and it can't restore the food into the root for the winter, right. so it comes back very much weakened. Look at that! That's a two-year-old oak tree. And obviously hasn't been in any way damaged. It's been not been damaged at all. It's just, just it's just sprung back up. And that wouldn't have a chance of surviving. If, if the bracken was here, that tree's got to grow to this height before it can break the canopy and it will die before then. Of course. Because it can't, it won't get light, it won't mm. be able to feed itself, so it will so just die. Little oak if we had any other kind of machinery in here to try and deal with what we've just that done. That could well be. That, that could well be an ex-oak. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's really incredible to see, to see sort of firsthand and straight away yeah. the difference that it makes. Oh, I'll have to come back now in a few years and see how <laughs> see our little oak's yeah, we'll doing. To, we'll spray paint that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but CB was here on that. Yeah. <laughs> Since the 1930s, almost half of the ancient woodland in England and Wales has been lost to agriculture or damaged by the planting of non-native trees. This has reduced the habitats of some important native plant and bird species. This was an undermanaged and neglected wood. It had been planted with inappropriate species uh, and so we've been managing and reducing those to allow the native species to seed in the space that we've provided to create a more natural woodland. I mean all you can hear are birds today. Yeah. I, I mean I, I just I love that and you just obviously living in a city you don't have the pleasure of that no. on a day-to-day -day basis and you, you've seen an increase there in even we've, the We've the seen a definite here. increase I and mean, again it's, it's something that we've, we've surveyed birds, butterflies, wildflowers, all those sorts of things. There are certain ones that are here anyway because they're woodland species but um, through through active management what you create is is wherever you go for the first five ten years you create a scrubby lair which yeah. is perfect for the small songbirds. Well you're doing something right because Ella's as happy as anything this morning Ella's, isn't Ella's, she? Ella's Aren't right. you Ella? She's quite content. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you are. Yeah. <laughs> it's not just those who work in Herefordshire who embrace tradition. I've heard that some of those who play here too prefer things the old-fashioned way. Meandering through Herefordshire is the River Wye, all 134 miles of it. And I'm heading now to where it forms part of the western border with neighbouring Wales. The Wye is a wide and shallow river with a rocky bottom, so it doesn't take much sunshine to warm it up which means generations of locals have flocked here for a spot of wild swimming. It's so good, in fact, that 60-year-old Barbara Luthwaite relocated here 11,000 miles from New Zealand. All these other guys are going swimming too. <laughs> she runs a campsite next to its waters, and I'm here to meet her. So, Barbara, <laughs> you've come originally from New Zealand. Mm -hmm but you've decided that this is the place you want to be. I've got to ask you why, the why. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking for somewhere with enough water to swim and boat, and I kept being drawn back to, to the Wye River, and you can see how lovely it is, and yet 
have to be daft not to want to be here. No, of course, it's, it's absolutely glorious. How far have you managed to swim on the river here then? Two Septembers ago, I started at the source and I swam 70 miles in seven days. That's amazing. Down to Mornington Falls. Oh my yes. gosh, that's fabulous. Well done. <laughs> but I was telling people it was turning into the Y crawl rather than the Y swim. <laughs> the river was quite shallow in parts. <gasps> yeah. I'm not the most confident of swimmers, but the sun is shining and I'm told the river is warm. It suddenly got really busy. Everyone's listening to Barbara's advice and what to take a day. I'm not so sure now that I'm here. Barbara, I need your encouragement. <laughs> <laughs> if you step a couple of steps beyond the stream, you'll find, like these people, that the water's tepid and beautiful. OK, OK. Yeah. And then over where the boat is, it's shallow, so um, we'll walk up there and then swim back down walk onto the beach. Way. OK, yeah. OK, yeah. that all sounds so, good. If Fido can do it, so can I. Right, it's, it's getting, getting slightly warmer. It's a lot warmer. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Wild swimming has enjoyed a boon in popularity in Britain in the past five years. Perhaps because our rivers are cleaner now than they've been at any time for more than a century. It's best to come in the afternoon when the sun's been warming the water all day, and I have to admit, it's exhilarating. After a rather <laughs> wimpish start for me. <laughs> Once you're in, it's so lovely, Barbara, i got to say. It's beautiful. It's relaxing. Yeah. I can see you relaxing. Yeah. Yeah. I tense myself up, you see, and that's the worst thing you can do. I'm like that in the warmest of swimming pools, so, you know. <laughs> of course, you should only swim in our country's rivers under the supervision of an expert like Barbara. I'd like it if everyone in Britain felt comfortable in the water. And I think that's the safest thing too. If everybody's used to it, then it's not a big surprise. <laughs> Obviously, swollen rivers, fast currents, places where it's particularly rocky, you don't go jumping in willy-nilly. I've had a, a lifetime of being in and out of the water. That experience, that build-up of experience, it'll keep you safe in the long run. Well, you've got me hooked. After about 20 <laughs> minutes, I'm in. Okay. <laughs> Herefordshire is just beautiful on a day like this, of course, it's so green and luscious. You've got your pear orchards, your apple orchards and your hops, of course, here. With over 3,000 orchards in Herefordshire, cider production has been a traditional industry for centuries. But there's a unique small holding in the very west of the county using this landscape to produce an altogether more modern product. And being Herefordshire, it's based on handmade methods. Hello, Christine. Hello, Paul. Hello. Lovely to see you. Yeah, lovely to meet you. <laughs> this um, is uh, this is your office, basically. <laughs> this, this is this is my office. Yes, oh, and it's, a it's beautiful, a, beautiful place, and the view here as well. Absolutely beautiful, and we've got the Black Mountains there above Hay over there. Botanist Dr. Paul Richards has run a herb farm here for 30 years, or as he likes to call it, a herb pharmacy. Tell us about the work then that you do here, because it's something well, actually I, I've, I'm really interested in. We started doing herbal medicines. We graduated to using the properties of our herbs in skincare products. I think we're probably unique as an organic uh, enterprise where we do the whole process. That means then we can control everything, and it just feels more holistic. You know, it's the whole we're doing the whole thing. In the summer, Paul's fields are crammed with around 300,000 flowers. They bloom at different times and only the fully opened flowers provide the best end product. So each flower has to be painstakingly picked by hand. I volunteer to get picking. Excellent. This is us. Okay, and there's no there's no perfect technique to this. It's just being gentle in the. Just gently. They just they just kind of fall into your hand, really. They do, don't they? They, oh, don't, yeah. they don't last very long. These flowers. Okay. They want but, to be picked. Yeah. <laughs> Mullen is a plant traditionally used to make dyes, but it can also act as a natural moisturizer and anti-inflammatory. We need all the help we can get here. <laughs> there's a lot to go. A 
Around 900 petals are needed for a batch of the farm's eye cream. Yeah, actually, the flowers feel really delicate, don't they? Oh, you know, they do. As long as you feel, you'd feel that they'd be... You can, uh, exactly. Yeah. I'm heading to the goat shed now because apparently that's where the science bit happens. After a quick change, I meet Orla and Sarah, Paul's laboratory assistants. I'm looking the part, obviously. <laughs> Let's just remind ourselves, goats once inhabited this space. Am I right in saying that? That's they did, yeah. right. No, you look outside and it's quite difficult to appreciate the context. Of you. course mm. it is. It's exactly, it's as natural as it can be out there and then there's a bit of chemistry going on in here. Well, I just like the fact that it's you two in here. It's not some huge production line somewhere. Yeah, it's basically cooking in a kitchen just without all the tasty well, bits. That's kind of what it is, yeah. isn't it? It's, it's a form of, it's like a cooking show at the minute, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Herbs and flowers have been used since at least the first century to promote beauty and for healing. Brilliant. To make this herbal eye cream, the petals are infused in oil. Then we add some vitamin E, a dose of evening primrose oil, a jug of aloe vera, and some Siberian ginseng. It looks like something you dip the fancy Italian bread into it at this does, stage, doesn't, doesn't it? it? <laughs> it's like a giant soup mixer. It's quite heavy. Yeah. <laughs> then stir. And voila, a pan of herbal eye cream. From start to finish, from, from straight out there, mm -hmm. it's a huge big pot of eye cream. <laughs> So here's our finished product. Look at that. All this goodness in this huge big pot ends up in this pretty little bottle. When I came to Herefordshire, I did not expect a crash course in herbal cosmetics. But where I'm headed now, east along its country roads, is to Bromyard and something a little more typical of rural England, this small market town's annual gala. Just the whole fun of, of putting a float together and the children drawing on cardboard plates to stick on the side. I used to do a float and you make such good friends. It's called community and we in Bromia do it very well. There are over 60 county shows in the UK, the oldest established over 200 years ago to help farmers promote agriculture. But they soon became a part of cultural life, and while the business side still happens, mostly now it's about having a rip-roaring good time. But the gala looked very different a year ago. There were no paying visitors, and these fields looked more like a lake. Over a month's worth of rain was forecast to fall in two days, and guess what? It did. This was a complete washout. The gala had to be cancelled, and in fact, its whole future was hanging in the balance at that point. So it's incredible to see it today. It's sunny, it's really busy, and the people here are just loving it. Bromyard Gala is charmingly old-fashioned and seems to bring together what is best about Herefordshire. Just making it very clear, this is a country pursuit. And what could be more nostalgic and charming than a jamboree of vintage transport? From steam engines to classic motorbikes. I love this, there's a few push bikes in here as well. This little one here is like my very first bike. I was about this little girl's age, when mine was blue. <laughs> The gala is known as one of the best vintage get-togethers on the circuit. You'll see no monster trucks here, but you might find the odd 15-ton traction engine, which is monster enough for me. Richard, I've got to ask, how did you acquire this magnificent beast of a thing? <laughs> uh, well, it didn't look like this when I acquired it. It was, um, it's come back from Tasmania, actually. Really? Mm, built in, in the UK, in, in Cheshire, Sandash. It was about 1907. It, was, uh, it arrived at our place on uh, 
two lorries and 12 pallets. And what kind of reactions do you get when you bring it to, to galas like this or, you know, taking it out at all? Most people say, oh, look at the size of those wheels. <laughs> do they all come along and do that? Yeah, yeah, yeah I want a pound for every <laughs> photograph, have... you know. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I am allowed to have a little. Of course you got. Yeah, yeah, let's right. do it, let's okay, do it. Okay. And away it goes. Oh, wow. After the briefest of instructions, Richard lets me behind the wheel. And it was off to the main arena to test my steering abilities in a parade. The traction engine was used in rural counties like Herefordshire in the 19th century to move heavy loads but they were replaced by petrol-powered tractors in the 1900s because tractors were cheaper and more manoeuvrable. Even in perfect conditions like today, I can tell you, steering a traction engine is not easy. Oh, oh there, there we go. go. Yes. Richard said I was very good for a beginner. Look at that, I parked that up perfectly. It's, yeah, it's a very satisfying climb. thing, yeah. and the yeah. fact I actually managed to turn it and straighten you did, it up. You did excellently well, I think. Uh, yes. I'm happy yeah. enough with that. <laughs> What's clear from my time in Herefordshire is that the county wears its love of tradition proudly on its sleeve and manages to make being old fashioned feel like it might be the way forward. It's full of nostalgic treats, and I think I've got time for just one more. Perfect, thank you so much. I've had such a great day and it's wonderful having last year been a complete washout to see it today. It's sunny, it's really busy. It's just illegal to leave here without having had an ice cream. Here we go.